Hi, I'm Alexa Borrego. I'm 24 and I'm the owner of Bad Fish Florida in North Palm Beach. I always wanted to go shopping at like the stores that I would see online in YouTube videos, but we didn't have anything like that around us. And there were some cool stores, but you'd have to drive pretty far to get to them. And I always was searching for stuff, ordering online and not having the best experiences. So I realized we, uh, we needed a store here. This is my beautiful used pet supermarket tank system that I got while I was opening when they were going out of business right down the street, which was pretty frightening, but we made it fit through the door, it was hard work. We broke some tanks, we got them back in there. We cut off all the plumbing so everything in here is running on its own. But it's our shrimp tanks, um, a lot of nano fish. I've been keeping fish as long as I could remember. I started with, you know, like the basic stuff, goldfish in a bowl as a little kid. My mom always had a big reef tank and she always took me to the fish store to shop for that and I eventually moved to having saltwater tanks and then I found passion in freshwater again. I kind of started out just, you know, not expecting to open a store. I had a fish room in my house. I had a lot of fish, a lot of plants going and I realized I needed to make some extra money to try to maintain that hobby. And I started selling a few things here and there out of my tanks in my house and I realized there was actually like a big market for this stuff. I was selling a pothos cutting on offer up for $2. And people would come in to pick up the pothos cutting and they would see my tanks and be like, oh, can I buy a guppy? Can I buy one of these Java ferns? And it went from there, really. So we have some of our bigger fish over here. We have this really cool Sevrum. We have a lot of plant tanks. We have some in the middle here that are actually cow watering troughs, but they're kind of cool because it gives you a different view of the plants when you're shopping for them. And then there's our regular plant tanks over here. I did a lot of online research, but I also learned a lot from experience of keeping the fish and having every mistake possible and every issue possible happen. But a lot of online research, YouTube, reading online, um, and I also like connecting with other people in the hobby to get their opinions and experiences. Honestly, the biggest surprise was how awesome of a community we were able to build just around this store. I didn't expect to make so many friends so quickly and like have real support from my customers and their real friends now show you the beta bog down there. <laughs> this is actually a frag tank that we use to make a little beta swamp. And we have our shelf here where nobody could ever make a decision quickly. For the most part, I looked at stores around me and I picked out the things I didn't like and I made sure I didn't do those things. Um, I definitely learned how to build the shelf from Cory on Aquarium Co-op and I really learned a lot from his channel uh, throughout the years of keeping fish and researching to start the store. I always had Aquarium Co-op sponge filters in my tanks at home so those were the ones I liked. I like how the sponges are coarse, I like them better and I like the green color because it does hide the algae. So I already had a bunch of those and I, I used a bunch for my fish room when I moved the stuff to over here but I did have to order a bunch more. I think the hardest part right now is probably, I really can't think, sorry. It's just like, I don't have a lot of like negative thoughts about it. The hardest part is learning how to deal with the criticism I get from a lot of people, especially when I first started. Um, a lot of people told me not to open the store. They would never let their kid, you know, take a chance like this. They told me it was a bad idea. And I really had to learn to deal with that and kind of just look past it and do what I wanted to do. How many tanks do you have? Right we have 40-something tanks. We haven't done an exact count lately. All right. We're always adding and always upgrading, though. Every time you come in, there's something new. And we have our pond with our mascots here. So our diamondback terrapins, chocolate chip, and vanilla bean. <laughs> They love to bite people's fingers, so nobody's allowed to put their hands in the pond. And they hang out with their frontosa friends down here. I'm trying not to be nervous, sorry. 
how much did it cost for you to put everything together and how long did it take? So it cost about $30,000 to put everything together and it took us about six weeks to remodel, get everything set up and get up and running. So one of the first challenges I ran into was actually getting my wholesale license and being able to get accounts with all of the wholesalers because I didn't have a storefront. I was out of my house and most of them want you to have an actual storefront. So that's when it really clicked and I was like, okay, it's time to upgrade and move to a real place and get started. But besides that, it was pretty easy to get all of my permits that I needed. What's the biggest disaster you've had so far? The biggest disaster I've had so far was when the ceiling collapsed a few months after I opened. So that was definitely a huge disaster. It wasn't fun. It wasn't pretty. I thought it was honestly the end of the store. But we worked through it and got it all fixed up. Was that disastrous enough? The ceiling that's falling in? <laughs> I mean, if you thought it was the end of the store, that's a disaster, right? Did you have yeah. A when the ceiling came down? It fell in, like here. I don't know if I actually took a picture here and all the way back. So, like on my computer, on my desk, everything back raining. there. Oh. And it was raining in a tropical storm, so the power was out for days and I was closed for. Yeah. All of the insulation got wet in the ceiling. Um, we had to rip everything out, redo everything. So, right where I'm sitting, I would have been. Yes. <laughs> okay, so my favorite fish to keep, there's two. One of them would be peacock bass, and on the other end of the spectrum, I really like gara rufa. They're just cute and funny. For me right now, the best-selling fish are live bears, like platties and guppies. I think people really like to have them. They like trying to breed their own and raising the babies, so it's a pretty popular thing right now. The next thing I would like to accomplish in the store would be an automated uh, water chain system or a drip system for my beta rack. That would save us a lot of time. I sell some stuff online. I'm just selling on Instagram and TikTok right now, um, but I would like to open the website for orders soon. And how can people find you on the social media platform? <laughs> so people can find me on all social media as Alexa underscore Badfish, except for Facebook, it's Badfish Florida LLC. I forgot to hit record. <laughs> <laughs>If you like this video, we have more Florida content on the way. A compilation of the weekend along with collecting some of the most beautifully colored cichlids I've ever seen. Do you want to see me crash a drone into the water? Do you want to see Corey collect fish next to a gator? Well, stay tuned for the next episode. Thanks for watching.